This is all that's left of a house that was hit by a landslide near Lugano in southern Switzerland. Two women who were inside at the time were killed, another four people seriously injured. Rescuers continued searching the rubble for any sign of other possible survivors who may still be trapped. We think the three people were able to save themselves at the time. It could only be luck that got them out. And across the border in Genoa, in northern Italy, this police footage shows a similar landslip which killed two people. It's after torrential rain and storms hit the region over several days. City streets became rivers with muddy water gushing along them. In the past two weeks, they've had as much rainfall as they would normally get in a whole year. Major flood alerts remain in place and more severe weather is expected. It looks like the next 24 to 36 hours will bring similar amounts of rain to similar areas, northern Italy, up into the Alps as well. A lot of snow falling, but heavy rain, perhaps the main problem, once again being pushed in from the Mediterranean, hitting those steep slopes inland and then rushing down towards the coast. The weather is estimated to have caused $150 million worth of damage already in northern Italy. Some farmers fear heavy losses because their fields are waterlogged. And with at least two lakes in danger of overflowing, people are bracing themselves for more disruption in the coming days. The results of weeks of severe storms across northern Italy. The scene from this town near Genoa is a snapshot of the region. People are being warned to stay indoors because of the risk of being swept away. Emergency teams dispatched to the worst affected areas are trying to pump water away. But the land is so waterlogged and the rain keeps falling, it's proving a tough battle. People are starting to feel frustrated. They never do anything. What can we do? Stay close in our homes? It's a terrible situation. We shouldn't have got to this point. I was trying to cross the street, but it's impossible. I'll just turn back. Southern Switzerland has been affected too. Early Sunday morning, a landslide caused by the deluge slammed into a three-story building. The bodies of two women have been recovered, and police say they're searching the rubble to check no one else is underneath. Back in Italy, the torrential rain has severely disrupted road and rail links across large swathes of the country. It's also once again exposed how fragile the infrastructure is in certain areas. Poor planning and widespread illegal building has compounded the situation. Earlier this week, officials estimated the damage caused by the storms would cost $125 million. The flood damage from this weekend has yet to be added to that bill. Right to those reported tornadoes, though, in the south, doing damage overnight as so much of the country, don't have to tell you, in a deep mm. freeze. And Ginger has the latest. Yeah, and they all come together here. The danger is now. We actually have injuries reported along the Gulf Coast in parts of Florida. And you can see why. Tornado watches and warnings in the red boxes there that stretch into parts of Georgia. And the threat doesn't end there. It goes into South Carolina, a little clip of North Carolina, and almost as far south as Orlando going through today. That's the severe side. A lot of energy on the north side bringing snow. Oklahoma City had two and a half inches of record snow over the weekend. And now Erie, Pennsylvania, just one of the places getting hit now. And boy, in the next couple of days, Gio Benitez is about to tell you about the lake effect to come. Tick invasion clobbering the country from Missouri to Indiana, even New Mexico. Frigid temperatures creating slick roads with dangerous driving conditions. Watch these cars attempting to turn at one intersection in Oklahoma City, instead spinning completely out of control. The city reporting so many accidents, they ran out of ambulances to send for help. A guy pulled out in front of me and slammed on his brakes and uh, 
I slid and almost hit him. I was terrified. In McLean, Texas, temperatures so low, parts of Interstate 40 frozen solid. Treacherous roads in Lubbock causing more than 50 accidents and four deaths. In Roswell, New Mexico, conditions so terrible, generating over 45 accidents, including one truck that rolled over and left one in the hospital. In Nevada, Missouri, just two inches of Sunday snowfall, creating disastrous conditions, leading to multiple wrecks on the side of the road. And in Indiana, heavy snow overnight, making the early commute a scary ride for drivers hitting the roads this morning. This incredible time-lapse video showing just how quickly the freeze hit. This lake in Washington State going from liquid to ice in just a few hours. And back here in Erie, some three to six inches of snow are expected, but locals here tell me they are preparing for a whole lot more, Ginger.
it's no secret that Oklahoma is seeing more earthquakes than ever before. Fox 25's Keaton Fox has been researching these quakes all year long, and Keaton seismologists are somewhat concerned about the number of quakes that we're having. Like well, you said, it's no secret. Oklahoma has had a record number of earthquakes, mm. and we've had 19 earthquakes today. Wow. 19 today. Let's it's been such a dramatic see. increase, the state and seismologists like Austin Holland can barely keep up. With 4,600 quakes this year alone, it averages out to about 14 quakes a day. It's pretty remarkable how many uh, significant earthquakes uh, we've had. While the state's biggest quake remains at that 5.6 that hit Prague back in 2011, large quakes are happening more often. Holland says the trend doesn't bode well for the state. It is concerning just for one reason, the more small and moderate sized earthquakes we are, the, we have, the more likely we are to have a larger uh, potentially damaging earthquake. So uh, as these earthquakes continue at this rate, we become more and more likely to have a more significant earthquake. Got some more breaking news from the Middle East now. It's not good. The State Department confirming three Americans are among the four victims of a terror attack in Jerusalem. That is the police response outside the synagogue. Three Americans dead, one British citizen dead as well. Eight others injured when two men ran into the temple with meat cleavers and a gun. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowing a harsh response from Israel to that violence. Ambassador John Bolton, former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. and a Fox News contributor, and so good morning to you. This, this really continues a drumbeat of deadly violence. What is happening there, Mr. Ambassador? Well, I think several things are significant. Uh, first, we know that Hamas has applauded the attack, has not taken credit for it. Uh, but I think we should watch developments there because when Prime Minister Netanyahu says there will be a harsh response, obviously the question is harsh against whom? And if there are links that this was directed or inspired by Hamas, then I think we know what the Israeli retaliation will be. Uh, second, this attack against a synagogue in a, a Jewish neighborhood of Jerusalem, not in uh, East Jerusalem where the uh, Arabs live primarily, but 
but an attack in, a, in an otherwise uh, peaceful neighborhood, I think intended to convey uh, the terrorist message that no one is safe uh, anywhere in the city. And then finally, uh, we don't know whether the fact that uh, of the dead, three are Americans, one British apparently, whether that was a motivation. In other words, was this an attack on foreigners as well, or was it simply an attack uh, on a synagogue that tragically killed four foreign citizens? Uh, but I think the implication here is uh, is very clear that the prospect of uh, a further negotiation between Israel and the Palestinian Authority is pretty close to zero. Yeah, meet cleavers in a gun. Israel has done a very good job in recent years at keeping suicide bombers out of Israel proper. That's why you go to a meat cleaver as brutal as that is, because your sources in the past for killing are no longer available. Right, and I think the fact that, uh, that they're willing to use knives and axes uh, to have literally blood on their hands as they kill their victims uh, is related in part to what we see in ISIS beheading foreigners, including three Americans. Uh, what we saw in uh, Britain with uh, drummer Rigby being killed uh, uh, in a knife attack on the streets of London. What we've seen in this country with a beheading recently. Uh, that, that, the, that the terrorists are uh, clearly intending to show not only are they willing to sacrifice their own lives, they're going to commit their terrorist acts in the most bloodthirsty way they can. And I don't think you can blink this reality anymore. This isn't workplace violence. Uh, and whatever the provocation that the Palestinians may point to, there is no excuse, period, close quote, no excuse for killing innocent civilians. Yeah. And the Iranian nuclear talks continue today, too. Very dangerous. Keep, keep a half an eye on that as well. Ambassador, thank you. John Bolton in New thank York with us. Well, it's really sick. Uh, and what you're expressing right now is the right outrage that you need uh, in looking at these things. Unfortunately, what you're expressing, the outrage that you're expressing, is not shared by governments around the world. They have swept under the rug the problem of incitement. For 20 years right now, since the peace process began, if you saw, Megan, day after day what Palestinians were putting on their television stations, which they control, in their official media, the newspapers that they control, in their textbooks, which they control in their schools, if you saw what they were educating a generation of Palestinians to believe, the scenes you saw today would not be shocking.
A woman in Virginia charged with lying to the feds about her support for ISIS after promoting support for that group on Facebook. The FBI says she offered to connect someone with the terrorists. Well, now she's in jail, at least until tomorrow when a hearing is set. school have the right to know about your sex life? Well, Florida Atlantic University thinks that it does. It's requiring students to answer intimate questions about their sex lives, how many partners. If they don't, guess what? They can't register for classes. Questions like specifically, how many times have you had sex in the last three months? How many different people have you had sex with in the last three months? And if you've had sex in the last three months, how many times you've used a condom? Well, the school says that it's required to offer sexual assault awareness and training to students under federal law. Now, Clemson University dropped this same exact study after complaints, but judge, this seems pretty personal, and I don't like that if you don't answer, you can't register for class. Is this really what federal law dictates? No. Uh, well, first of all, I, I think that it's it's kind of offensive. That Can I get my dollar <laughs> back? Dollar? I thought this, I thought this was you paid Thank a lucky guy. God, we it up, Judge. <laughs> judge, we're that trusting was a you. Lucky guy fee what, to get nothing. That was so, smooth. You're worth more than a that. buck. I think I'll start there. <laughs> I, th I, th I think that if if you saw the questions that were asked, because the one about have you had sex in the last three yeah. months, mm -hmm. that's just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. It's it was it just went on from there and they were Very more specific. offensive every one you went mm -hmm. went through the, the idea of saying that you have to answer these questions before you can register because we have are, are obligated to provide um, training on avoiding sexual abuse and sex uh, uh, sexual violence what does one have to do the, with the other what does 
your sexual life, how many partners you've had, by the way, that's one of the questions, how many different partners you've had and do you use a condom? There's what there is a mention at all. Do? I mean, this, that's There's, why it's so offensive. And you also don't know if, if you have student peers who are looking at this data, if oh, it somehow course. can be yeah. used against because, you because people or say, made public. People say, well, they, the government, or the school says, oh, but this is completely private and confidential. This is governmental information. Yeah, yes, right. because first of all, we can all trust the government to keep our privacy. I mean, you know, the NSA and everybody, never, never mind that level but secondly the government is not some like amorphous entity out there some computer it's some guy named spanky who's looking through your records okay. and your answers spanky to the looking at my sex survey makes me very uncomfortable very uncomfortable what are, so we have now a second long island school blocking students from creating a christian club a student at Wanta High School applied to form the club back in mid September she says the principal denied her request saying it was illegal to form a Christian club at school even after hours. The school district, however, says the request is still under review. Well, that student is here, Liz Laverde, as well as Hiram Sasser, the Liberty Institute litigation director. It's great to have the both of you. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Liz, you wanted to start a club called Dare to Believe. Why? Um, to help kids and better serve the school and community and uh, just to reach out to the kids with depression and going through bullying just to uh, make a difference. Because Christianity had helped you with those very issues, right? Yeah, it did. Mm -hmm. So what happened when you went to the office and tried to submit an application? Uh, I knocked on the door of the principal after I went to guidance. Um, my guidance counselor reviewed the proposal and he said it was perfect. So I knocked on the door to the principal and I went in with my friends and she said, is this for the Christian club? And I said yes and she said, okay, you can't have it just because it's a Christian club and it's illegal to have one. Illegal? Yeah. All right. Uh, Hiram, <laughs> are Christian clubs at schools illegal? Well, not only are they not illegal, but uh, Congress passed a law in the 80s signed by President Reagan called the Equal Access Act uh, to make sure that Christian clubs would be allowed. The Supreme Court's already enforced that before in the Mergen's decision back in the 90s. This is well-settled law that they have to allow the Christian club. When they allow the Animal Rights Club and the Recycling Club, they have to allow the Christian club as well. They have over 30 clubs. And just because mine was faith-based, they wouldn't recognize it. And didn't the principal also tell you that it had to be a combination of all religions? Yeah, but I told her that I was open to everyone. Like, even though we'd only be studying the Bible, I told her that anyone could join of any religion. What is it about our society right now and our culture, Hiram, that a principal would actually use the word illegal yeah i don't know what's going on with some people that get allergic to religion and somehow they think that oh if we allow something religious in the schools that some, that the the walls are going to come tumbling down the kids have always had first amendment rights they've always since 1943 the supreme court has recognized that kids have first amendment rights when they walk into the schoolhouse to be able to have their faith and to be able to to either refrain from certain activities or to be able to do certain things and i just don't understand why these school officials uh, over and over again here in long island uh, you know repeatedly repeatedly denying Christian clubs when that's clearly a violation of the law under God under the gun a New Jersey family suing its school district saying that the phrase should be removed from the Pledge of Allegiance because it violates this particular family's atheist beliefs well this high school senior won't let it happen Samantha Jones is leading a different fight to keep the pledge just the way it is God and all Samantha good to have you glad to be here why did you get involved? Um, I got involved when my dad brought it to the family when he first heard about the lawsuit. Um, I got involved. This is so important to me because I've recited the pledge since I've been like a little kid. Right. Um, the phrase One Nation Under God sums up the history and values that I've always learned about in my history classes because it acknowledges that our rights don't come from the government but from a higher power, so they can't take away the rights. Now. This atheist family argues it's offensive to them, so that in deference to them, you shouldn't say it. You say what? America is a very diverse country. So many different people with a lot of different beliefs call this country home. I think that everyone's beliefs, including atheists, are protected by the phrase one nation under God, because again, it does acknowledge that our rights don't come from the government, but from a higher power. So they can't take away the basic human rights it did not create. I don't think that it's as much about religion as it is about our rights. Everyone has the right to remain silent, but they don't have the right to silence everybody else. 
And I feel that taking under God out of the pledge is then silencing me. Man's t-shirt got him kicked out of a Planet Fitness gym in Orange City. The 70-year-old showed us his collection of anti-abortion shirts today, and he told Channel 9 Shannon Butler when someone complained about them, he was told to change or leave. And they said I would have to leave if I didn't change the shirt. Mike Amoroso is passionate about two things, his health and babies. But the two collided when he wore this shirt to this gym. The staff asked him to take it off. She told me, she said, I'm very sorry, she says, but we have uh, someone who is not happy with your shirt. Someone's offended by your shirt. You know, I wear them all the time. She says, well, you know, they said that you'd have to leave if you don't change your shirt. So I says, okay, I'll leave, I left. Mike says he wore two different shirts. He thought that it wasn't what was said, but how it was said that was offensive. So he took this shirt off and the next day came back with this one. But it seems this still was just too offensive. Do you understand why people are offended? Yes, yes, I do. But for him, it's an issue of freedom of speech. He has a pile of abortion-related T-shirts. He says he has nothing against women who make the choice, but he would like to see an end to abortions. A gunman opened fire inside the Florida State University Library, packed with hundreds of students. Leah Gabriel here with brand new details we have just learned about the shooter. Leah. Well, good morning, guys. Police say the male gunman shot up a library filled with nearly 400 students right in the middle of the night. But this morning, calm is restored. There is no indication of any additional threats to the university, the students, or our community at this time. All indications that we have Based on the information right now, this is an isolated incident and one person acting alone. New video shows the moment students studying for midterms heard this terrifying announcement over the loudspeaker. Listen. There has been a shooting in the library. Stay where you are. Well, you can see the students taking shelter, many abandoning their computers and their backpacks, some even boarding up desks. Freshman Max Martin was in his dorm room across from the library when he heard the shots ring out. We heard a gunshot, and then you got a text message saying there was a shooting, and we were just like, then we started hearing sirens. It's like you hear about all these shootings on the news, and you never think it's going to happen. And then it just happens, right, literally not even half a mile. The gunman injured three students before campus police confronted him outside the building. They ordered him to drop his gun, but instead he fired at them. Officers then shot and killed him. At this hour, no word on a, mo on a motive.
I mean, now, Fox News senior judicial analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano. I mean, it is a clear 180. And the, the attempt to now say, oh, I was only speaking to those who wanted me with the stroke of my pen to just enact the entire stalled Senate bill is a straw man. That's not what they were pushing him to do. They wanted him to suspend deportations. That's what he's about to do. When he suspends deportations and when he imposes his own conditions on those suspensions, He's effectively rewriting the law, and that violates his oath to enforce and uphold the law as it's been written. The American people, the Congress, and the courts need to know that we have a president who will enforce the law. When he says, I will not enforce the law because I don't like it or because I'm impatient, I'm impatient. that doesn't wash under the Constitution. Is there an exception in the Constitution to, you know, the, the, the separation of powers? Says, but what if you get really, really irritated? What if the Congress is a do-nothing Congress that stops your whole agenda? Then do I get to be emperor? It almost sounds as if he believes that, especially in light of the tapes that you just ran, which correctly stated the law. He can't rewrite the law. Look, all presidents have some discretion. We call it, as you know, prosecutorial discretion. He can, he can suspend some prosecutions because he wants to reallocate resources, but he cannot suspend a statute. And if he suspends the prosecutions of five million human beings under certain conditions that he made up, he is effectively rewriting the statute and the effect of his exercise of his discretion is the opposite of what the law commands. Okay, but when do we get to that point? Because he, in that same speech he gave yesterday, said, well, other, he basically, his new defense is, uh, all the kids are doing it. All, all the presidents are doing okay. it. He talks about executive orders, he talked about Reagan, he talk, talked about Bush 41 saying, they've all done it, there's no problem with me doing it. Every president since Dwight D. Eisenhower has, has suspended some defense Deportations. President Reagan did it to 100,000 families. He did it on the basis of the 1986 statute enacted by the Congress. President George H.W. Bush did it for 1.5 million people. Only about 350,000 took advantage of it. And again, it was based on his interpretation of the statute. President Obama does not reinterpret a statute. He takes a statute and says, I'm going to disregard it. I'm going to give you a better one. I'm going to set down a standard, a set of standards that I would have written had I been the lawmaker. He's not the lawmaker. Right. He's the law enforcer. He, and he already did what President Bush the elder did in giving basically de 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 deferred pre uh, deportation or suspended deportation to 1.8 dreamers, the, the kids who were brought here early. He already yes. did that. Yes. And they didn't impeach him. They didn't shut down the government over that. So he got away with that. But now he's raising the stakes to another 5 million. And at, one po at what point does he cross the, the clear line from discretion to completely ignoring his executive obligations to when, enforce the law? When he grossly abuses his discretion and when the effect of his discretion is to suspend a statute or to have the opposite effect of what the statute commands. That is a gross abuse. I, he will be playing with constitutional fire if he does this. I want to ask you why people should care, because for me, this is not about how you feel about the 11 million illegal immigrants living in this country, whether you want them to have, quote, amnesty or not. It's about executive power. But I, I want to get your take on it, because I asked liberal law professor Jonathan Turley, who on other issues, on Obamacare, has been jumping up and down about the president and his executive overreach, is saying, that we are headed toward emperor. We are headed toward king. I asked him about why it matters the other night. This is what he said. I want to get your thoughts. Okay. What the president is suggesting is tearing at the very fabric of the Constitution. We have a separation of powers that gives us balance. And that doesn't protect the branches. It's not there to protect the executive branch or legislative branch. It's to protect liberty. It's to keep any branch from assuming so much control that they become a threat to liberty. The American people have got to force this issue and say, look, we may agree with you on what you're trying to do, but we don't agree how you're trying to do it. Well, I fully agree with, with Professor Terley. Put aside what's in the president's heart. It may be a humanitarian notion which is laudable. His oath is not to his heart. His oath is to the Constitution. If he assumes so much power that he can blanketly refuse to enforce statutes he's sworn to uphold, then we all lose liberty because then he becomes, I hate to use this phrase, but it's true, he becomes a prince. And future presidents will rely on this behavior right. if he gets and away with it. it was never meant to be that the executive was going to be the most powerful of all the three branches who could overrule the Congress because he's irritated and he's impatient. And they've told him, the people's representatives, those folks in the U.S. House were elected, they've told him, no. 
They've, told, they've given him an answer. You're exactly correct. So then the question becomes, what will Congress do? Let's say Congress overrides these. Let's say Congress uh, nullifies these executive privileges. He vetoes the nullification. They override his veto. How do they know that he would enforce any new laws that they passed? Right. He won't enforce these laws that were on the books from before he became president. These aren't the amorphous, you know, Congress, uh, congressional representatives who had this low approval rating. They are there as individuals to represent the people. They are the people's voice, and the people thus far, as a group, have said no to this bill, to, to this move, and he, with the stroke of his pen, is overruling. That's why I say he will be playing with constitutional fire if this happens, and we don't know where it's going to end. But we will be in for a 25-month period of constitutional crisis and stalemate precipitated by the president, Maybe. assuming powers the Constitution doesn't give him. Maybe. We'll see. The Republicans have you know, painted themselves into a corner now because they have uh, allegedly overreacted to certain past uh, actions that now they seem... They, they seem gun shy. And I don't know about impeachment, I'm talking about that, but it just seems like they're not sure what they should really do politically. We'll have to watch it play out. Judge, good we to will. see you. Pleasure. I'm Alex Sawyer, and this is your exclusive Washington Times Daily Briefing. Despite a so-called war on women, Republican women set record numbers in 2014. Three of the four female senators elected this year are Republican, and three of the five female governors are also Republican. At the state level, there were a record 140 Republican women elected in total. Senate Democrats asked President Obama Monday to go around Congress and grant legal status to illegal immigrants on his own. But immigration attorney Kyle Barella told me if President Obama acts on his own, there could be major consequences. With the EB-5 visa, which is uh, an I-526 petition, the wait time can be anywhere from 9 to 12 months. That's what the current processing times are. Now, just a little bit ago, about a year ago, times were even shorter. Uh, and I have to imagine that if this executive order goes through and Obama does what he says he's going to do or gives amnesty to all these undocumented I individuals, uh, the wait time should definitely increase. I can only imagine that the wait times are going to increase.